the Bon Voyage edition of Tip Off with all sorts of things. But I'm so frazzled, I have no idea what's coming out of my mouth next. It's all next on a big edition of Tip Off. Boom, 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 boom. Not sure when this happens next. Boom, 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 boom. Getting on an airplane. Boom, 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 boom. I don't know. <laughs> all right. So here's the deal. Kevin O'Connor uh, podcast coming your direction. And then I am I, – I, I will be back the week of the draft. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I think we probably, most of us know, I'm generally probably incapable of getting all the way away. Uh, but I, I don't think tip-offs will happen. They might happen just an audio version. I am taking a recorder, so that if something happens and I need to do some work, uh, I can do it. So I'm taking off with the family, though, for a little while. So uh, uh, I, I, I'm not going to go away. Technology does follow me. It's not like I'm going to, like, the jungles of Costa Rica or something. So, uh, anyway, a uh, lot of things to touch on. Unbelievable last 48 hours of basketball, and I can't imagine what's about to happen in the next 48 hours. And we're going to learn so much uh, about Miami particularly. So that will be cool. The O'Connor interview is pretty good. It'll go up around noon today, or it probably is already up by the time uh, – uh, you hear this, um, so it'll be it'll be curious to hear your thoughts on that uh, as they're at the Chicago pre-draft camp. Okay, let, let, let's start breaking down a few things. Um, I want to go backwards because I didn't get a tip off in yesterday. Um, actually, you'll laugh about that. That's because I dropped my kids at the bus stop. I usually drive them to school, but I drop them at the bus stop. And then stunningly, Chatty Kathy here started talking to one of the moms and and psychoanalyzing life and my kids and everything else because my brain never stops and I forgot to turn off my car all the way. I had it just on the midsection. And I talked long enough that I had dead battery. So then I didn't get back in time and I had other things I had to do, like try to play golf in yesterday's wind, and so I never got back home to record tip-off. All right, anyway, you can tell. We're, like, literally leaving in 10 minutes. I am frantic to get this out. Uh, oh, gosh, I'm so sorry. The Damian Lillard uh, preview is not done. Uh, I, I, I've done it. I've watched it. I've edited the videos up till 2 last night, but I don't have time to do the voiceover. Uh, here's my quick take on him. It's very hard to evaluate him when he's playing – against Paul Bunyan and his four Paul Bunyan twin brothers. It, it, it's, it's incredibly difficult. Uh, his decision-making to me is average at best. I love the fact that he rebounds for a guard, in contrast to Kendall Marshall, who is, seems to be allergic to that. Um, he can get on top of the rim a little. I didn't see him above it, but he can get to the rim. He's really quick free throw line to rim, which I like. That's universal. Uh, he can make shots. Uh, he makes some bad decisions, but he has a lot of burden on him on that team. I'm a little nervous about his age. He's 21 playing on college. I always am nervous about those players. You know that with Jimmer last year. Um, his, but his, his rebounding is good. He's not there to make other players better the way Kendall Marshall is finding guys at the right spot and giving them easy looks. If he's giving it up, it's off something else uh, because something didn't work for him. So he's a different type player. You know, on the high end, there is a chance. I, I don't think so. I mean, on the peak end of things, he, you know, I don't think he has the tenacity of a Westbrook, but maybe. Um, I think he might be Michael Conley and have to then figure out, as Conley did, how to give the ball uh, to people uh, on the NBA level. Uh, and I, I, I think he's a starter. Uh, Marshall, I think, could be a bench player. Lillard, I'm pretty certain he starts in the NBA. He's just got enough moves and uh, ability and – uh, gets around and gets a shot off and makes plays and and with that I think he'll um, I think he'll evolve into that and in, in, to an NBA starter um, six three which is good size watching him actually made began to make me wonder if I thought Burks could play more point guard because I just don't see the natural passing skills out of Lillard uh, and distributing skills that are out of Lillard, and so it made me kind of wonder whether that was something Burks uh, might be able to do. So th those are some thoughts on uh, on Lillard and, and where he stands and what he's doing. Okay, uh, one thing I brought up on Twitter, I'll bring it, I bring it up with O'Connor. We're all desperate for a shooter, but the shooters don't play. You get to this level of the playoffs, and as much as you have to have guys who make shots, and you're desperate 
Matt Bonner doesn't play. Danny Green doesn't play. Daquan Cook hit two big shots, but he doesn't play. Uh, you know, unless you're – Shane Batty, who's not as good defensively, su- suddenly wasn't on the floor last night for a little while. Um, you know, some of these guys that are just pure one-dimensional shooters are really scuffling – to get on the floor in the playoffs, and I think it's eye-opening. We definitely need some shooters, but it should tell us a little something that these guys are having a hard time getting on the floor. You've just you got to be you got to be so tough to play in, in in these big games, and you have to have a lot to your game. Uh, and I think that's I think that's what's telling uh, to what's taking place right now. And you just you look down these rosters and those guys that are just there to spot up and shoot. You know, suddenly that's they're Keon Dooling, who kind of gives you a lot of other stuff. He's not great, but he gives you a bunch of other stuff. May become more valuable. I mean, Cal Pietras, who is a who is is kind of can defend and do some other things, gets to be on the floor a little bit, and there's probably a lot better shooters out there. Uh, so just I think that's worth noting. Uh, the key moment to me in the Oklahoma City San Antonio series, uh, and as we go forward, this is something to watch. You talk about youth and development. There was a moment where. Uh, I mean, they've completely discombobulated San Antonio. Uh, Boston's beating Miami. Oklahoma City has knocked San Antonio out of everything they do. Matt Bonner's not even on the floor. Guys who they lived by this year, who made the difference for them, that were their excellence, are completely off the floor. They're they're not using their regular rotations. They can't even get into their stuff um, in in a lot of different ways. And so they I they really. I'll be surprised if Oklahoma City doesn't win tonight. I still think Miami could win the next two. But I'll be surprised if Oklahoma City doesn't close this thing out uh, because of simply how discombobulated the Spurs are. But the key moment to me in that game was Durant hit a shot. It was the second quarter or so. And he's walking back, and 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 the camera gets up on him. He's cheering. And what I suddenly realized is these guys are are so unified and they're so together that they're creating their own energy and their own electricity in a visiting building. That they are no longer uh, needing the outside crowd. They're no longer lead, needing that type of uh, stimuli from someone else. That they have gained a self-confidence and a group mentality that's allowing them to do this themselves and I think that that truly that was that was a key moment uh, I saw that and then followed by how discombobulated the Spurs were and you really uh it, it shows where they, they are and it's dis it makes me puke to be honest with you all my sonic people out there that I communicated with for years and and uh uh, and we had that bond on the Sonics pre halftime and post when I was the Sonics voice and the connection I had to you as a fan base. If any of you are, oh my gosh, it, it yeah, it's just hard. I, it's almost like I have to leave uh, watching and, and get out of here so I don't have to see them make the finals. It's uh, And to watch Clay Bennett, uh, uh, though he treated me fine, uh, get that trophy is going to be just more than I can handle. Oh gosh, I just, I my my, my heart pains out to uh, to all of you, uh, Sonic fans, if any of you are out there. Uh, in the Miami-Boston series, the telling thing to me was Garnett's Doris Burke postgame interview where he says, we know this is tough and we've got to fight through it and that's how we stay in it. And yet every interview you ever hear from uh, Eric Spolstra is him telling his guys, like, come on, this isn't going to be easy. You know, they're so gifted and so talented, LeBron and particularly and maybe Wade, that throughout their lives and their AAU games and everything else they've done, in a lot of ways, it's been easy. And their talent has overwhelmed all. Uh, Wade worked at Marquette and and worked to get a title at some point, and that's why he seems to be getting a continual pass. But there's something just fundamentally wrong with Miami's uh, understanding of how hard it is to win at this level and how tough you have to be. Uh, Jeff Van Gundy pointed it out beautifully uh, when in the way in which these guys weren't getting back defensively. I mean, what, a, what a kind of stunning concept that they weren't getting back defensively uh, on plays. And I think that jumped out to me uh, as much as anything else that's, that's going on with them and, and who they are and what they're doing. Uh, by the way, while we're talking, I just got note that the uh, – while I'm talking that the Draft Express has put out a Damon Lillard 
uh, video scouting report. I've tweeted it out. Uh, I actually just did that right now. And so, therefore, you guys can catch that uh, as well. All right, so, uh, and the other one on Boston and Miami, it's funny, I, I don't see a ton of adjustments that Boston made to get themselves back in the series or what they've done to um, do that. They're, they just, they're making relentless plays. The play where Rondo misses a layup, comes in from out of bounds, lays it back in, the tap out to Pietrus. Uh, Pietrus is unbelievable. Garnett's block on LeBron is amazing. Uh, Paul Pierce is just doing, the, the, they're making plays. And that's what this gets into. That's what Harden's one-on-one jump shot was. We talked about that on tip-off earlier this week, that you just make plays. All right, a uh, few other notes for you. Blazers get a new GM, uh, Neil O'Shea. He's very good. Uh, he was very good for the Clippers. Now, the thing is, though, they've had other very good um, GMs before, and what ends up happening is that that organization is so dysfunctional that it it ruins the GM. So, I'm you know, I, I wouldn't get too concerned, though they have some nice picks. We'll see what they, they're going to do. Uh, I do get a vibe that they are looking to trade six and eleven or and or eleven for a veteran presence, and I, I don't know if it's possible that that veteran player could be someone on our roster. It would probably have to be Millsap or Jefferson, depending which they wanted. I, I don't know if you can get six or eleven for it. It seems unlikely, but uh, it's worth keeping a little bit of an eye on because the word I'm getting around the league is that they are definitely looking to move one of those players, and it will be curious to see uh, what they can pick up and how much they. They like those players. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised also if Jerry Sloan doesn't surface around there. What's interesting, Neil O'Shea said he'd like to have that coach in by the free agency, but not necessarily by the draft. Um, it it would obviously eyes would open if if Jerry ends up in Portland. Uh, there was there's some agent work going on there where the G, uh, Caleb Canales has the same agent as Neil O'Shea, who's the new general manager, and so maybe some of that's going on. Uh, and there might be some inner workings there taking place where Wayne Legary is very, very powerful and able to conduct how most of these things go on behind the scenes with his power, and that may prevent it. But I still think there's a chance Jerry surfaces uh, around Portland. Lakers have picked up the option on Bynum and are talking extension. That would then mean that their trade piece is Pau Gasol, and that in all likelihood, as they tried last year, that they will move Gasol. I, I think it's almost uh, impossible for the Lakers to bring back Gasol, Bynum, and Kobe as a threesome. I think that has there's damage been done there. I would be surprised. So I think Gasol uh, floats around at 32 years old with two big years left on his contract and probably is the big piece that gets traded in this offseason. All right, uh, I think I've covered everything I was going to. Uh, again, uh, Kevin O'Connor coming up. Uh, there's no way I can get the Damian Lillard video done in the next 12 minutes before we leave. I apologize for that. Uh, I had hoped to. Uh, I have downloaded some vi- scouting videos, and there's always a possibility that I'll publish one in the next two weeks. I don't think so. I think that would go over badly. They take a lot of time. So uh, I hope you're well. Thank you uh, for your continual uh, commitment to Locked On Jazz and following this. I will try to stay in touch, not go too far off the grid, and uh, I will be back with heavy draft coverage the Monday of draft week. I will be buried into the computer and too scared to bite because I'll be out of shape. See you.